Lenz's Law, and a pictorial approach. So our goals here are first to introduce Lenz's Law, and then of course we'll go over a pictorial approach to Lenz's Law, as the title of this session suggests. Okay, so Lenz's Law, what we know is that exposing a coil or a loop to a change in magnetic flux will generate a current if the circuit is complete. And you know, Faraday's law was all about that. But the direction of the current is given by Lenz's law. So this pertains to the minus sign actually in Faraday's law. So Lenz's law says, a changing magnetic flux induces an EMF, a voltage in other words, that produces a current which sets up a magnetic field that tends to oppose whatever produced the change. And this opposing tendency is why Faraday's law has that minus sign. Uh, the induced EMF is minus N delta flux over delta T. So basically, coils and loops are a lot like us. They don't like change, and they will try to counteract any changes in magnetic flux imposed on them. Now, of course, they're not successful. We can make the change. But while we are making a change in the magnetic flux, the coil or loop tries to oppose that change while the change is taking place. And again, this tendency to oppose is why there is this minus sign in Faraday's law. So one way to understand this, one way to approach this, is to draw a set of three pictures. And our whole goal for drawing these three pictures is simply to figure out the direction of the induced current that's in our coil or loop when we have a changing magnetic flux. Okay, so first we got to do a little review. So, in what direction is the magnetic field inside a loop if the loop has a counterclockwise current? What if the current is clockwise? Okay, so this is a right-hand rule question. So, these pictures show you the answers. So, the way I personally do this rule is to have my fingers curl in the direction of the thing that's swirling in a circle. In this case, that is the induced current. And then my thumb goes in the direction of the thing that's going in a straight line. The magnetic field lines are going straight through the loop. So in the picture on the left, picture A, I've got my thumb on my right hand pointing into the screen the way the field lines are going, and my fingers wrap around that loop in a clockwise direction. So that's indicating that to produce this field, that goes into the page, we have to have a current running clockwise around the loop. Conversely, if our magnetic field that we're trying to produce is out of the page, as in picture B, then the, field, the, sorry, the current has to circulate counterclockwise around that particular loop. Okay, so again, the thumb, the way I do it, the thumb is the magnetic field, and the fingers are the current swirling in a circular path around the loop or around the edge of the coil. Now you can actually do the rule so your thumb is always the current. So for instance in uh, picture A, if you go to the bottom, you would have your thumb as the current going to the left and then your fingers swirling would give you the field direction. That's the field direction if you hold them. You should be able to see that they come out of the page below the wire but then wrap around and go into the screen above the wire if you're looking at the bottom of the loop. Alright, so whatever way you do the right hand rule, hopefully you agree with these pictures. Okay, so here's an example. A wire loop in the plane of the page is in a uniform magnetic field directed into the page. Now, over some time interval the field is doubled, so that is going to change the flux through the loop that is going to give rise to an induced current. And what we're trying to figure out is what direction is the induced current? Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? And we only get an induced current while we're changing the flux, so while the field is changing. Okay, so here's our steps. We'll go through them quickly, then we'll do it uh, in pictures. So I always draw a before picture, the situation uh, involving the loop before the change takes place. What does the field look like? Then, after the change, draw an after picture showing the field passing through the loop after the change. It's very important to note that the field in these two pictures is coming from something external to the loop itself. 
However, in step three, you draw to oppose picture. This is the field created by the loop, okay, to try and oppose the change in flux. And step four, use your right hand to figure out if you know which way the induced field is, well, which way does the induced current go? Okay, so let's go over that one at a time in pictures. So what does the situation say? The loop is in a uniform field directed into the page. Okay, so we have some field lines going into the page. Doesn't really matter how many you draw. And then the field is doubled, so our after picture has twice as many field lines going in through the loop as we had before. Okay, so what's the change been? Uh, fewer field lines, two more field lines. Okay, so to oppose that change, the loop tries to create its own field opposite in direction to the change that we just made. We just added field lines into the page. The loop says, forget that. I'm going to try and cancel that out by creating my own field out of the page. And all you really need to draw on this to oppose picture is one field line. That's sufficient because it's a very qualitative method of trying to figure out which way the current goes. And then you do your last step. I'll just put that up there that you only need one field line. And step four is now you know the field which is induced by the current in the loop must be out of the page. You do your right hand rule to figure out which way the current goes. So in this case we have our thumb. I do it the way I do it. My thumb is out of the screen the way the field line is in the two opposed picture and my fingers swirl in a counterclockwise direction. That's the way the current has to go to produce this field. And remember, these field lines over here in the before picture are coming from something external to the loop. We make some change in that external scenario so there's more field lines going through. Then the loop itself sets up a current which creates this field. So only the field in the two opposed picture is created by the current in the loop. Fields in the before and after picture come from things external to that loop. Okay, so that is our introduction to this pictorial approach to Lenz's Law, where we're just simply trying to figure out which way the induced current goes around the coiler loop. The end.